Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be looking at concrete column axial design, and specifically we're going to be looking at when the column is in pure axial compression only. Um, in some situations where this might happen, right, is maybe you have a shear walled structure, um, and you have some internal columns that are supporting a roof or a floor above that really aren't going to take any lateral load, um, and so we're just going to be looking at the vertical loads applied to uh, one of those columns. So we're going to be utilizing uh, ACI 318-19, um, sections 6.6.442, and then also section 22.4. Um, and those are uh, relating to the buckling capacity, that's in the chapter 6 section, and then the maximum allowable compressive capacity of the column, uh, and that's going to be the section 22. So uh, basically it's determining the capacity of the concrete uh, under the pure axial load, right, does not consider any moment. It's going to be based on the gross area of the concrete, the longitudinal steel, um, the tie type, whether you have spiral ties, which generally perform better, or uh, if you have just regular uh, uh, square ties or, or round ties. Um, and then we uh, are also going to be checking the unbraced length and looking at the Euler buckling capacity strength. Um, sort of some of those typical calculations you would check for a column in compression. Um, and again, just to reiterate, right, this assumes that the load is concentric, uh, right? So it's concentric about the, the center of either the, the circular column or the square column. So let's take a look at our problem statement for today. We're going to be looking at a circular column. Um, it's got a dead load of 175 kips, a live load of 75 kips. It's got a diameter of 18 inches and the unbraced length is 15 feet, and that's gonna be fully unbraced. It has nine number seven longitudinal bars. It's gonna be a non-pre-stressed, and it is going to be uh, have spiral ties. And we are just gonna be checking to see if this column can resist the applied loading, and then also whether buckling controls or the maximum allowable compressive strength controls. So let's go ahead and open up CalcBook, and we'll get started on the design. All right, we've got CalcBook open now, so we go ahead and click into our concrete design. And for a column axial design, you can click on either the concrete member design, which will be here for axial only, and we also have it in the standalone design too if you want to click on it there. So both, uh, both paths will get you to the same calculation. So now that we've got it open, we can go ahead and click on our uh, design inputs here. We're going to change this to a round column. It's uh, non-pre-stressed, so we'll leave that as is, and then we have spiral ties. So we'll go ahead and change that to spiral ties. Uh, the diameter of our column is gonna be 18 inches, and then this axial load ratio, beta DNS, uh, has to do with the EI effective, so the effective sort of stiffness of the column. Um, and this beta DNS is a ratio of the maximum factored sustained axial load against the maximum factored axial load with the same load combination. Um, so you can calculate that yourself. Um, alternatively, the commentary in ACI uh, permits you to use a beta DNS value of 0 0.6. So that's what we've set the default uh, to in CalcBook, utilizing the equation 6.6.4.4.4a in ACI 318-19. Uh, so you can uh, go ahead and read you know, the commentary in that section, um, and it talks about the different values of beta DNS. And just to kind of speak a little bit more on that, right? It, this has to do with the effective stiffness of the column. And uh, I'll, I'll do a pop-up here of, of the equations in ACI. But basically, that top uh, part of the equation is the sort of short-term stiffness uh, of the column. And then um, the reduction of, of one plus beta DNS um, accounts for, for creep due to the sustained loads of the column. So that's what we're, we're getting there for our effective stiffness EI effective. Okay, so moving on, um, we're gonna change our unbraced length to 15 feet. Uh, we didn't specify in the, in the uh, problem statement, but we will assume that we have a pinned pinned condition. So we'll use a K factor of one. Our rebar, we said we had uh, nine number seven bars, so we'll change this to number seven. We've already got nine in there, and then we'll leave these material properties uh, as the default values. And then we wanna go ahead and enter in our demands, right? We're gonna be using ASC seven load combinations, so our dead load is gonna be 175 kips, and our live load is gonna be 75 kips, and we'll get that entered in there. Okay, so now we can go ahead and walk through the calculations. So our demand, Right, we are going to be uh, controlled by 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live, so that makes sense there. We're at 303, 330 kips uh, total. 
And then we want to do some preliminary design uh, calculations and our limit checks. So we'll look at our total reinforcement area, our total gross sectional area, our modulus elasticity of concrete, and then our moment of inertia. And then we'll also do a quick check of our reinforcement limits against the code. Um, and we are within the code limits there. So then we can move on and calculate our critical buckling capacity. Um, and that's going to be that EI effective equation that I was talking about earlier, right? And we just plug in the values that we've already calculated. And we get a critical buckling load of about 480 kips. And then we can go in and check our maximum axial compressive strength, right? And that's going to be in accordance with chapter 22. Um, so we have our first term here that we have to calculate, which gets us 1170 kips, and then that gets reduced based on uh, the column being non-pre-stressed with spiral ties. So that's 0.85 uh, times that value, and we get a nominal axial capacity of 995 kips. So it's clear that our buckling load controls in this situation. So we just take one more look at that, right? Our buckling load is 478 kips. Our nominal is 995 kips. And so therefore, we're going to be controlled by buckling. And then we apply our strength reduction factor for a compression-controlled member with spirals. Um, and that's going to get us a design compressive strength of 360 kips. So that gives us a total DC ratio of 0 0.92, which we are OK with. Um, and to just answer the problem statement, right, this is controlled by buckling. So. One other thing I wanted to note here that we've added recently to CalcBook is this uh, different uh, level of detail for the calculation output. So if you don't want to see as much information, right, you can click on simple. And that basically just hides the middle step of the calculation. So you still see the equation and then the final answer, but you don't uh, need to necessarily see uh, the equation with the, with the values plugged in. So if you don't want to see that, you can just hide that by clicking on simple and it makes the calculation a little bit shorter, but still provides sufficient information to uh, understand what the, what the program is doing. So uh, we hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and if you uh, would like a 25% discount on your first month subscription of CalcBook, you can use the discount code YTCB2024. Um, and you can use that during checkout uh, with your first month subscription of CalcBook. So again, hope you enjoy the video and we'll see you next time.